San Francisco's Mission District has long been the heart and soul of this city's cultural life. And certainly a beating vein of that heart is the Community Music Center. With us now, one of its program coordinators, Martha Rodriguez Salazar. Welcome. Hello. Thank you, David. So your organization has been bringing music to students for how many years now? Well, a lot. It, it started in 1921 there in the heart of the mission, Cap Street, between 20th and 21st. I mean, that is, very, that is the heart of the mission. <laughs> that is the heart of the mission, and we're still there, and hopefully now expanding to the next door building that uh, CMC purchased just recently, and so we're having that plan of expanding our campus as well. Great. Now, I mean, there's been a lot, of, um, a lot in the news lately about the changing mission and gentrification and whatnot. Are you safe? Well, you could, as I was telling you, I, I don't know how safe, would, and what's that translation of safe, but I think, you know, we, we take care of each other, take care of each other there in the community as well. Uh, I come from a rough city, Mexico City, so in comparison, I should say that, yes, it's n not that unsafe. Right, right, right. And now, knowing the gentrification situation in the mission, I think that, you know, it's, it's, it's getting better, I right, think. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, what I meant by safe was the building, not, not the crime. I mean, but you, you own your building. Cap Street Project right. owns its building, and you're expanding into a new building exactly. you own. Exactly, yes. So we may have another 100 years almost of Hopefully, community yes. music center. Hopefully, yes, at least, yes. But yes, we do feel safe. Yeah. Indeed. And as I say, you know, I think uh, the community in itself is, is very friendly. We have c people coming over to our uh, building that's from little kids, babies even, yeah. to I think my oldest student is 94 years old. Yeah. How important is music to a young person's development? I think it's basic. I think, you know, if you are able to develop skills such as you know, like such as these, if you are playing the piano or drumming or having a sense of a beat, it just really goes well with your math, with, you know, your language skills, with computer skills, why not? You know, you're going to be able to type yeah, I faster. Was told, yeah, I was told, I mean, I've played piano since I was five, and my typing teacher said that's why I type so fast, because I had lessons at an early age. Exactly. So, I mean, we, we sense that from younger age. I mean, it's just music helps enormously. But also what I am realizing, and we are realizing with these programs that we have been extending for the adult program, older adult programs, such as uh, these fantastic choirs that have been going on now for four or five years, uh, we can see the change, immediate change with the seniors. They're becoming much more social, happier, people who have been perhaps depressed mm -hmm. because um, they've come to this country, they're feeling alone, they don't speak the language. Suddenly we, we are hoping to provide that element of socialization and music into their lives and the result is immediate. Right, so this isn't just about art, this is about society. Totally. Yes, and that's what I, th I love about this organization. I've been teaching there for the past 15 years, and it's been the best place I've ever worked, really. I mean, I come from Mexico City. I came over to this country to study music at Mills College, and then I came over and I said, gosh, what's that place? I, I love it. And I started playing, I mean, just teaching for flute students back then. And now I, I think I serve maybe like 180, 200 students um, a week. And you know, I see from old to young to kids, and I think that that's the whole flavor of that place. It's just amazing. Right. You know, for, for many years, the, the mission was considered, quote unquote, uh, a Latino uh, community. But the, the cross currents of San Francisco's diversity really flow through the mission. I mean, it is becoming more and more, even more diverse. I mean, there, there's a healthy LGBT component to the mission as well, correct? That's correct. That's correct. And I mean, it's. It's an interesting point that you're putting. Uh, LGTB community in the Latino communities is, is, is a hard one. Um, I, I was raised in Mexico, and, and it, it just, it's hard. I was Because of religion? It, yes, and moral concepts that have mm -hmm. to do with religion. Um, now that I'm conducting choirs in Spanish with Latinos, I feel like they're my uncles, my aunts, my grandparents, and I'm just out with them, you right. know? And I think that that helps a lot with just like being more open in general for them and for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, and there's more openness with definitely some exceptions. But uh, as not only Latinos, I mean, we also at the Community Music Center, we teach, you know, music from uh, China, from Hungary, um, jazz, and we offer a whole array of uh, different uh, private lessons, music classes, workshops, concerts, mm -hmm. a lot of them free. 
and so it's just it, as I say you know I, I love I love this place yeah was it difficult for you coming out as a, a lesbian as a, a Latina in your family it was yes I mean I think I'm still in the process of going out more and more you know every time I go there you know I, I, I go there with uh, with Jennifer my wife who also works at the community music center and we we met there uh, 10 years ago and yes no I mean the, the process has been slow but um, it, it was hard yes do you think it's easier for the current generation or is it still difficult I'm speaking specifically about the LGBT community within yes. the greater Latino Latina community I think it's easier but also it's easier depending on where you are geographically I think the fact that I came over to this country to, to start with I landed at Mills College which I didn't know it was yeah. kind of an Isle of Lesbos I was about to say which, which you know when I when I realized I believe me I didn't know I just came over because I was following my teacher who turned out that, that, that she was at Mills College uh -huh. and then when I landed I thought whoa what's going on here not only I was feeling much more comfortable being myself but also I mean I noticed things such as oh, hey now you're a woman of color mm -hmm. when in Mexico I, I was the white yeah the white yeah. girl right uh, but I think for younger people now it's easier I mean I can see much more of an opening of uh, the religion right. and morals right, right, and right. ethics in Mexico. In our closing moments, let's let's take a look. Actually, we've got some music actually from I believe one of your holiday shows. Oh yes. Um, the holiday show is is a big part of, of what you do, correct? Yeah, amongst many other things, but yes, that's a big big thing. Yes, it's called La Posarela, which is a totally makeup name, um, which combines Mexican Christmas traditions of Las Posadas and uh -huh. Pastorelas. It's a makeup yeah. name, uh, but it just becomes like a really wonderful holiday party for the 70 80 performers there and we, we you know we say um, things about like music and gentrification of the mission there's a devil there's angels the devil is is kind of uh, the, the guy from immigration not letting <laughs> Joseph and Mary come because they're immigrants illegal immigrants yeah which they were yeah. in the Bible story yeah definitely great well I really appreciate you coming and talking to us and I'm glad to hear that Cap Street owns its building so there will be many many more years of the community mission Center. more than 100 Thank hopefully you. thanks for watching this is 10% I'm your host David Perry we'll see you here next week